Fifi Mangaka here. Hirohiko Araki, beloved mangaka and creator of the timeless classic JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, has neatly curated up all of the secrets that launched him into manga stardom after creating one of the most iconic series of all time. And nobody's talking about it. From story writing to his literal template for creating characters, it's all neatly curated in a nice little book and sold for less than the price of your DoorDash lunch order. And let me tell you, in it has some absolute gems that any aspiring comic, manga, or graphic novelist needs to hear, like yesterday. Hirohiko-san has a spicy take about why to a degree art skill doesn't matter in your comic. Hirohiko believes that the secret to making art that sells a comic or manga is that in the artwork that sells, the artist is immediately recognizable from their art alone, and that sheer talent, or good art, is not enough to create a story that readers will love leading to that wonderful mula. He states that in his experience, art that would blend in with other manga at Shonen Jump at the time would often perform poorly on reader surveys. They would basically just wash each other out, leave readers with too many indistinguishable options, and not sell well as a result. But what's the other side of this, you ask? What does distinguishable art look like? Well, let's do a quick quiz. When you see this image, what author or series comes to mind? What about this? Or this one? I purposely used characters that are side characters, and odds are you still knew exactly who the author was, or at least the series that this character could be from. If I kind of parse through what this means and try to derive some actionable step for aspiring visual storytellers, that means the more unique and differentiated your art, the more likely it is to sell. If someone can look at that artwork and say, this mangaka drew that, well, you've probably got a pretty good story on your hands. What do you think about that? Do you agree? This really means one thing to me. If you're creating a comic or manga, it's imperative that you do exactly the opposite of what might blow your art career up on the internet. Don't copy styles or techniques, rather lean into your own unique style. For my artist friends out there that maybe the widely coveted hyper rendering doesn't apply to, for the ones that could never get that pixel perfection who paint their works in a manner that isn't super realistic, that like texture, curves, and variation to their line work, that means it's your time to shine. Embrace the imperfection in your artwork that may have made it a little bit more niche in your respective art community. Double down on the odd approaches you take to drawing features like faces and hair, because it's you, it's human. That's what makes your artwork distinguishable. You know, as an artist and a writer, it's often hard for me to pick a lane, so I choose storyteller. Maybe some of you watching this feel the same. I always felt that my art was different and I didn't prefer the types of art styles that seemed so incredibly popular online in the manga and anime community and even outside those communities too. And for a time, I was honestly a little bit afraid to start my own manga, Yield Treehouse, because I was afraid it looked simply too different from what seemed to be popular in internet art spaces. But this nugget of wisdom from Hirohiko-san validated my approach, and I hope it validates yours too if you find yourself thinking like I did. It reminded me that art is a reflection of our unique perspective, and the art in our comics and manga is how we convey that. And that's exactly what readers and viewers crave. Authenticity. Something that's fresh, different, and leaves a lasting impression. Basically, something that readers would be proud to tell their friends, hey, are you reading this manga? Well, you need to check it out, it's really cool. And that means to make art that leaves an impression and sells, you have to embrace your artistic defiance. Sure, it may feel a bit daunting at first, Stepping away from the crowd, embracing your own artistic approach, you know, it can be pretty lonely. And with the way the art community is online, maybe even sometimes a bit scary too. But trust me when I say this, there's a plethora of readers out there who are eagerly awaiting your unique vision, your unconventional style, and your daring choices. They're craving something fresh, something that makes them do a double take and say, I've never seen a mangaka draw X like this. Just with this YouTube channel, I've experienced it myself. I'm so grateful for all of the lovely comments and support and interest in my characters. I really never thought I'd see that. It's phenomenal. There is no right way to draw. There's no right way to draw characters and Design them. And anyone who tells you that has probably had someone else incorrectly say that to them too. And particularly in the comic and manga scene, we are super lucky to have all sorts of artistic freedom when deciding exactly how we want to approach the art styles of our stories. And in that way, art is much like handwriting. Actually, that was a belief I held for a long time. 
that your art represents your individuality much like the way you write. I was blown away to see that Hirohiko thinks the same and he mentioned that in this particular chapter of his book. We may have a handwriting style that we like, we may try to replicate it, but it's dang hard to do so perfectly because there's just so much intrinsic individuality with the way that we write. And think about your friends and your loved ones. You can definitely discern their handwriting from others by just looking at it, right? To make art that stands out in a comic, we needed to have the same effect that handwriting could have. You need to be able to look at this character, the one I'm drawing, Sasaki Tatsumi from Yield Old Treehouse, and immediately tell that the artist is Fifi Mangaka. Well, at least hopefully one day you can tell that. And ultimately, I think this is such an exciting approach. This is basically a pro, like the best of the best in the manga world, saying that he believes you can be successful as a mangaka if you dig deep into your artistic individuality. Do you know how freeing it is to hear that? I can't even describe it. From my time on the internet as a passive onlooker, I never wanted to post anything because I just don't draw like what's popular. But knowing that you can be successful, especially if you dig into that individuality, is like, it's like a gift to the earth. It's okay to draw differently. It's okay to have seemingly unconventional artistic elements to your work because that's really our secret superpower. So don't be afraid to proudly use it and create work that really sets itself apart from everything else out there. I know readers and viewers are really waiting to see that sort of stuff and we should take the liberty to proudly do it. And if you want more inspirational nuggets of wisdom from one of the best in the manga game, do yourself a massive favor and pick up Manga in Theory and Practice, The Craft of Creating Manga. Any aspiring comic author must read this. Your future self will absolutely thank you for it. Thank you so much for chilling with me and watching this video. I hope you found this information really valuable. I know for me, it has really validated my approach to creating my comic. If you like this video, feel free to give a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'm an author, I have five published novels, but I'm dipping my toes into manga, and I talk about lore, character design, all kinds of things adjacent to that as I'm writing my own manga, Yield Treehouse. And for those of you that are very interested in Yield Treehouse, it's Friday, and that means Yield Treehouse update day. So there's a couple of things that I've gotten done recently. This week, since I changed my schedule, it's actually improving my productivity through the roof. It's improving everything. So I have designs finalized for an airship in Yield Trios. Yes, there are airships. They're actually called skyships but I have finalized the design for the major skyship that will be in Yield Treehouse. That was something that took me forever and it's done. You're gonna see it on the channel pretty soon. I have also finalized another major antagonist that will be seen in the first arc. They're part of Drindithno's Ferius crew and they're very interesting. I'll just say that you'll also be seeing him pretty soon in a speed paint one way or another. I'm continuing doing my action poses and figuring out each character's moves and elements and, you know, getting those things under wraps because Yield Treehouse is an action manga. I'm really trying to refrain from saying shonen, but it would kind of be classified as a shonen. Um, so it's really important that I, I get some memorable action going on with, with my characters. So I'm doing, I'm making good progress with that so far. If you haven't noticed on the channel, I've been dropping little character trailers. Those are gonna keep coming. If you've always wanted to know a little bit more about each of the characters and you don't read my gigantic descriptions on this channel, watch those shorts on the channel. I give little blurbs about each of the characters and I've got about 15 of them to get through. So that'll give you just a little bit more tidbit about who exactly is in the world of Viso in Yellow Treehouse. For next week, I'm gonna keep fleshing out those action scenes, expression sheets, things like that. And a lot of the speed paint that you'll see going forward are definitely going to be more of the concept art sort. So I hope you're okay with that. Um, they probably won't be 100% full illustrations like this one I'm drawing right now, but it will give you a little bit more behind the scenes and hopefully bring some life to the characters that if you've been around with me since the beginning of this channel, you've been seeing. So with that being said, that's all of the ye old updates that I have for you all today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting me. I'm just so lucky to have such nice folks watching these videos. It makes me so happy and inspired to keep working on this story. So I love it. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great Friday. I will see you next week on Monday, the usual time, the usual place. Enjoy the rest of this feed paint.